We all know our first guest from Dawson's Creek. Now he's starring in the new hit show, Fringe. Please welcome Josh Jackson. <laughs> The, uh, yeah, girlfriend approved. I'm all well put together today for you. Yeah, oh, that's very nice. I, <laughs> I take that as a huge compliment. Now, this is your beautiful girlfriend, My Diane Kruger. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Diane played Helen in the movie Troy, yeah, correct? I've done okay. Yeah, well, she has too. You're no slouch. I'll tell you that right now, right up front. I don't know. I think if you look at. Which one? I, I'm doing much better here. Maybe then here. Somehow I don't Wait. think she would like this guy Wait. so much. Wait, which one are you? This one over okay. here. I'm the bad haircut guy. There he is. Oh. But, you know, it's a great show. You're, you're very fortunate, don't you think? Extremely, that, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're a great actor, so they're lucky to have you. But Thank it's you. nice to, to be on a show like Dawson's Creek and then be on Fringe, which is so hard for a TV show to make it. It is, especially it's been a very tough year, so the fact that people have been tuning in is great. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, Life people are more no than complaints. tuning in. I mean, it's, it's a huge success, and I think it's, I think it maybe it's because it's like the one thing that we don't know for sure. Tell the audience the premise of the show, if you don't mind, or all of us. Well, the, I like to hear it, too. The premise of the show is that science has gotten to a place that we're no longer in control of it, that we sort of open Pandora's box and it's running amok around the world, and we're sent to try and investigate and sort of keep the world from spinning apart. That's our job. But what, you I know, know I found you attractive for a reason, the, but now that I know how powerful you are. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's the, you know, it's the J.J. Abrams world. It's the, you know, big, wild, conspiracy, mad, sci-fi stuff. And this, the things that we're able to do are amazing. I mean, from the difference from Dawson's Creek to this show, the things that you can do on television are just incredible. Yeah, and J.J. Abrams, of course, a great storyteller. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, let's take a look. Let's show us that some friends. Since he's dead, Peter... You'll obviously have to be his ears and mouth. Eventually, we'll connect this to your head. Okay, dear, we're ready. Turn it on. Try 200 microvolts. Oh, look, Peter. He's talking to you. I suppose it's a good thing it wasn't attached to your head. Wow. You know, I haven't seen Vincent Price in a long time. He looks fantastic. He's held up well. Yes. Yeah. Got some daddy issues on that show, I think. That's my father, who's going to plug me into the machine there. That's really your dad in real well, life? Not in real oh. life, but on the show. Oh, the yeah. character on the yeah. show. Yes, that I understand, but I was like, wow. Yeah, they like to keep it close to home. And I don't know what it is about, I don't know if you guys have watched all the shows, but we've done 10 episodes and I've been strapped down and tortured twice. I think I might have angered JJ somehow. <laughs> well, no, it was just too big of a setup. The... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Clean it up, pal. Yeah, this sorry, is sorry. I know, I know. Um, I know. Can't uh, no, this anywhere. is a story that I love, and I wrote a note to myself because I wanted to remember to ask you about it. You tell tell us about your childhood home because this is something you know we still have our childhood home that we grew up you in. Really? Our, yeah, yeah. Well, I came back when I was two years old. My family moved from Vancouver, which is where I was born, and we we moved into Topanga, which is just a little right. off the beaten path Topanga here in LA. Canyon, yeah, out here exactly. in, in I was at a friend of mine's wedding in Topanga, and the day after her wedding, her brother and I, who have known each other since we were two years old, decided to go see my old house. And as we were in walking Topanga. in Topanga, right. and as we were walking through the field in front of it, the man who had bought it from my father happened to be sitting on the, the porch, and I called up to him and said, you know, this is my old home, and, and I actually put the sticker in the window over there. And he says, what, you mean in the dragon room, which is my childhood bedroom, which has a big wall-sized mural of a dragon painted by my mother's friend Virginie, and I went running across the field and said, I, you know, I can't believe that this thing's still on the wall. I haven't seen it since I was a little kid. So he bought the house and they never painted and over the dragon? Never painted the over the dragon. So, I, so I, I, you know, it's a Sunday afternoon. And I said, I know it's a lot to ask, but if you could let me in, it would mean a lot to me. So he lets me in, open the door, and it's like a mausoleum to my childhood. All the furniture's in the same place and the, the like, pictures are in the same place, which as you can imagine, is an emotional sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, just even going into your childhood home, even if it all had changed, yeah. I think it would bring back so much. Well, every room has a very specific memory, but 
we finally get up to my childhood bedroom and I stand in front of this dragon and I actually I said to him I was like I cannot believe that you left this on the wall and he turned to me and said I knew it meant a lot to somebody and that they were going to come back for it someday and that's me no way so and then it goes on yes but this is what I mean that's pretty amazing so, that somebody would respect the artwork yeah. or somebody's memory well and the, you know the story could have ended well there but then at the end of a long conversation I said to him if you ever and I was only 22 at the time so I said if you ever consider selling this house let me just have a crack at it I just like to know that I tried because obviously it means so much to me we exchanged phone numbers he's a great guy Arnie Costell still lives in town and the next morning at 9 a.m. he called me up and said were you serious about buying the house I said yeah it turns out I work on this TV show so I'm doing all right and he said, okay, it's yours. And he sold it to me the next day. So he owns his childhood <laughs> home. Went by. That's such yeah, a great story. It's a good story. And, actually, and then there's even one more step after that. So the reason we moved out of that house, sad story, my family separated. Oh, and, yeah, uh, it's tough for a kid. Yeah, it's, it's a you know, typical story. But the, my little sister was, is the first college-educated Jackson, which is a big moment. Mm -hmm. And the day after I was flying to New York to move her into school, uh, into her, into NYU, and that night, my two half brothers, who were my father's first children, my sister and myself, sat and had dinner for the first time ever in our entire lives. All of you together. Two nights, yeah, first time ever. <laughs> it was a big week. I know, but it's just, it says a lot about you how important those moments are. Yeah, they're important. It, it's life is good. I don't, I don't have many complaints. In That's fact, since I brought up the family, my little nephew Jackson, my oh. brother's son was playing around and broke his leg, so he's laid up for a couple of weeks in a cast, so I should say hi to Jackson. Oh, of course. Uncle Josh misses you. I'm very sorry that you're all laid up. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> well, I know. I, I heard the day you moved in, you painted over the dragon. I'm <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. You can no check problem. out French Tuesdays on Fox. Really nice to meet you. Okay. Really nice.